Thank you, Madam Chair, <clears throat> members of the Assembly Committee on Taxation. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, for the record, my name is Jason Frierson, Assemblyman in District 8, Speaker of the Nevada State Assembly. Uh, today I present uh, to you Assembly Bill 458. Uh, uh, I want to just give a little bit of background uh, about this bill and, and, and in case folks don't know a little bit about the Education Choice Scholarship Program. Uh, this program, also known as Opportunity Scholarship Program, was approved in 2015. It's a tax credit scholarship program that authorizes corporations to claim 100% of the Nevada Modified Business Tax when they contribute to approved scholarship granting organizations, or what we call SGOs. The SGO provides private school scholarships to families who meet certain income requirements. Uh, Nevada is one of 19 states with a tax credit program. Uh, to be eligible, family income cannot exceed 300% of federal po poverty level, which, is, which was 75,000 fiscal year 2018-2019. Uh, in, in that fiscal year, 90 schools participated in the program, and the maximum scholarship was $8,132. The amount of the scholarship increases by the consumer price index each year. Uh, the number of scholarships has increased each year. Beginning in six, 2016, 371 scholarships were awarded. Uh, 2019, 2,306 scholarships were awarded. For the 2019-2020 fiscal year, uh, there are seven registered SGOs serving Nevada. Under existing law, in order to become an SGO, uh, the Nevada Department of Education is authorized to approve applications that meet criteria until the maximum amount of tax credits authorized for that fiscal year is met. Uh, currently, the amount of credits authorized is equal to 110% of the uh, amount authorized for the immediately preceding fiscal year. For example, 2017-2018, the amount authorized was $6.05 million. 2018-2019, uh, that 110% made it $6.655 million. Uh, that, that brings me to Assembly Bill uh, 458 and what it does. But first, I'd like to make sure that I make clear what it does not do. Assembly Bill 458... Uh, does not uh, get rid of the education, the, the, the Opportunity Scholarship Program. That's not what this bill is. Uh, this bill is designed to deal with that 110% uh, increase in the credits authorized. Uh, the measure provides that the amount is 6.655, which it is currently, and anything, any remaining amount of tax credits carried forward, or carried forward from the additional credit authorization made in 2017, 2019-2019. Uh, Essentially, this uh, bill, uh, th this language as it currently exists has a 10% growth factor every year, and that is simply unsustainable. There is no budget allocation that we have in our state budget that could sustain a 10% growth every year, period. Um, you know, it's independent of uh, recession. It's independent of the state budget, the requirement that we fund education first. Uh, it's independent of revenue and, and shortfalls. It just makes uh, little sense to me from a fiscal responsibility standpoint to artificially build in 10% growth each year uh, for something that would be out of control within a short amount of time. And so in order for us to continue to provide this service uh, to, to families and to students that are receiving it, uh, I think that it warrants stability and certainty and uh, Taking out the 10% growth factor, I think, is a step towards making sure that we're being fiscally responsible with our entire budget. And uh, with that, uh, that is essentially the intent of the bill. Okay. Members, any questions? Assemblyman Hafen. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And, and thank you, Mr. Speaker, for bringing this forward. Um, I, uh, as you know, agree with you on this, that we want to make sure that this program stays in place. Um, and I understand that you know, 10% may be an unsustainable um, increase year after year. Had you considered um, doing a, a CPI or, or some other kind of increase to go along with this to ensure that this continues um, and keeps up with the cost of inflation? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Assemblyman Hafen, no. I think that we don't give teacher CPI raises. We don't give uh, university CPI raises. We have a budget that we have to allocate every biennium. And we work with what we have. And I think to, to build in only one category of allocation for automatic growth, no matter what, I think is irresponsible. Thank you. Assemblyman Edwards. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I have a kind of a question in this sense. If 
the program is not desired, then the 10% growth doesn't happen, correct? So if there aren't, if 10% if more people don't apply for it, the 10% growth doesn't occur. That's correct. Okay, <laughs> if there is that 10% desire, uh, why would we not want a successful program to grow, which is actually helping our folks out? It would be, I mean, the, our constituents would want it, and it would be a good way for their kids to get into a better environment or a better choice. Uh, and if I'm running the numbers correctly, if the most they got was 8,000, then that's about 2,000 less than what we pay in the public schools. So wouldn't that actually free up re uh, resources? <coughs> Thank you. Again, Madam Chair, through you to Assemblyman Edwards, uh, if we gave out 20%, people would apply for it. If we gave out 50%, people would apply for it. People would apply to get free money. Of course they would apply for it, but we're not in the business of just giving away money in this state. We have a limited budget, and we have to allocate our money responsibly. And quite frankly, I, I think that some some of the resources that we don't collect in the way of, uh, of these taxes and, and give away uh, are monies that we are taking away from the rest of the population. Now, uh, you mentioned the per pupil spending. I would disagree with you that we don't spend $10,000 across the board per pupil necessarily, um, but I would welcome making sure that the base for per pupil spending was $10,000. Uh, but the, the fact of the matter is, if there is free money, of course people are going to apply for it in any tax credit bracket. So yes, people would apply for it at the expense of everybody else who's left behind. I just don't want to get into the debate about the policy behind it. I'm not trying to get rid of the program, uh, but I do think that 10% automatic growth factor is just not a responsible way to budget um, in, in any capacity. Would you think, would you think that there'd be, I guess you may have just answered it at the end as I was thinking of the question, you don't think that there'd be any reasonable, sustainable number that we could use? I think a reasonable, sustainable number we could use for public public education across the board. I'm sorry, I missed you on that one. I know. <laughs> for this particular program, I do not think that uh, a built-in growth factor uh, is a responsible way to budget anyway. I think that we, as a legislature, have an opportunity to... Uh, fund at appropriate levels every session we come back. And so if this was something that this body collectively thought warranted 10% more, then I think that we have the ability to, to, to allocate funds in the existing program by 10% more. But to have a built-in growth factor, I think is just not responsible and doesn't take into account all of the other dynamics of our budget. So if we come back next session, we may very well agree that this program is worthy of a 10% increase in the amount of funding. I just don't think it's responsible to allocate that, mandate that in statute. Hmm. Thank you. Members, any additional questions? Okay, seeing, seeing none, we will go ahead and move to individuals who are signed in for support for AB 458. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, Alexander Marks with the Nevada State Education Association. Um, NSCA has been a consistent advocate for adequate public education funding and keeping uh, public funding at our public schools. We support AB 458 to eliminate the automatic 10% annual increase total amount of tax credits allowed for the opportunity scholarships. Every dollar allowed in a tax credit going to an opportunity scholarship is a dollar that the legislature could program in our underfunded public schools where 90% of Nevada kids receive their education. In February, hundreds of educators from across the state rallied under the banner of Red for Ed to draw attention to the chronic underfunding of public education. Despite recent efforts, Nevada continues to rank at the bottom of states in most metrics. In 2018's Quality Counts report from Education Week, Nevada ranked 47th in per pupil funding and dead last in both class size and over education quality. Nevada needs to do better. Opportunity scholarships are really just a backdoor to school vouchers. Instead of adverting funding from programs that pay for a limited number of students to go to private schools, Nevada has the responsible, excuse me, responsibility to allocate sufficient funds to public schools, which are accessible to every Nevada student. 
Over the last three years, not including the one-time expansion of the program last session, appropriations for opportunity scholarships have increased by more than 33%, while over the same period, per-pupil based funding for K-12 education has only increased by a little more than 4%. This is significantly less than the increased cost of doing business, which is a major reason we saw draconian budget cuts in school districts across the state immediately after the last legislative session. And we believe public money should be invested in our public schools. Thank you. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Chairwoman and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Annette Magnus, and I'm the Executive Director of Battleborn Progress. Today, I'm here as a native Nevadan, a proud graduate of the Clark County School District, and to represent the 20,000 plus subscribers to our Battleborn Progress network statewide. We have a long history of opposing vouchers in the state of Nevada, and the Opportunity Scholarship Program is nothing but a voucher scheme promoted by the Koch brothers. That is, why, or that is what this program has always been. We believe that when taxpayer money is spent, it should be spent on our public schools, period. Vouchers in any fo form are the wrong choice for public school reform. We need to strengthen neighborhood schools, improve classroom teaching, and enhance student achievement. We support AB 458, and we encourage you all to support it as well. Thank you. Assemblyman, you don't get up. Assemblyman Edwards has a question for you. I hope I can remember. You said that um, every dollar should be spent on public schools. Did you mean students? I mean students, class size reduction, whatever it takes to make sure that our public schools are strong. The taxpayer dollars that I spend, I don't have children. But I believe that every taxpayer dollar that I put into the system should be going to our public schools. That's where it belongs, not a private education. But I, I guess you confused me there because initially I thought you said students. It can be students, it can be teachers, it can be whatever the classroom needs. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we will go down south. Um, state your name for the record. Good afternoon, Chair Neal and committee members. My name is Amanda Morgan, Legal Director of Educate Nevada Now, powered by the Rogers Foundation and a partner of the Public Money Public Schools Coalition. I've provided written testimony in support of AB 458, but would just like to emphasize a few points. First, we've seen multiple national and state level studies that have made very clear we need to start investing more in Nevada public schools so we can support the actual cost of providing our students the opportunity to succeed. And that includes additional resources for students with unique needs, such as English learners, at-risk students, and students with disabilities. Research and our own experiences in the, in the state have shown investment in public school matters, especially for these students. Compare that to the private school vouchers that have shown very weak results in Nevada with 74% of voucher recipients sampled showing no growth, no growth or worse achievement levels. Other states have had similar results. Additionally, ENN has analyzed available information on staffing in private schools and found over 50% of teacher and voucher recipient schools have never been licensed in Nevada. And some schools currently have no licensed staff educating students. Compare this to the high standards and professional development expected of our public school teachers. Every single dollar counts, and we believe taxpayer dollars should go where there's accountability and results. Our taxpayers deserve that, but more importantly, our students deserve a high quality public education. And if there's a 10% growth factor, that should be in Nevada's public schools. For that reason, we support AB 458 and Liberty private school voucher funding. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your work. 